Hi Brett, can you tell me a bit about yourself? Um, certainly, my name is uh, Brett Pearson. I'm the Vice President of Attack Aircraft at Textron uh, Aviation Defense. Uh, my portfolio includes the, uh, T the AT-6 uh, that you see behind us, the Wolverine, and the Scorpion Jet, which is our new development, uh, clean sheet design, uh, light attack jet, ISR strike jet. Um, I retired from the Navy. I was a retired Navy captain, uh, Navy test pilot, F-18 pilot, and uh, finished up my tour as the wing commander at Pax River. Uh, the Naval Test Wing Atlantic before coming to Textron as a Scorpion test pilot um, and then uh, Wolverine test pilot as well. Can you delve into the AT-6 a little bit? Sure, the AT-6 is, uh, was our entry in the Air Force's light attack experiment, um, phases one and two, uh, and it was the one that was uh, in the final competition with our uh, Brazilian competitor. Uh, it did very well in that competition, uh, performed extremely well, and we're in the process now of selling the Air Force a few of these airplanes to uh, continue their own experimentation. Uh, and then hopefully to open up the, the worldwide market to, uh, to a, uh, a very strong competitor for the world's light attack market. What is the value proposition of the AT-6 Wolverine? Sure, the AT-6, uh, it's, uh, it's, a very, it's a single engine turboprop, very low cost, very capable in the dirt, very capable in austere field, but also at the same time capable of delivering precision, mun precision munitions up to uh, 500 pound class weapons. Uh, so rockets, guided rockets, uh, gun, and then uh, guided and unguided bombs. And it does so very effectively, uh, very efficiently from a cost per hour perspective. Cost per hour on this airplane is measured in the, uh, in the hundreds of dollars, not tens of thousands. And so we look at it as an opportunity, uh, even for a country that has high-end uh, fighters, uh, to, to take some of the burden of aircraft services off of that high-end fighter. A uh, great example is, uh, is training of JTACs, uh, um, Joint Tactical Air Controllers. They need, they need uh, dozens, uh, if not hundreds, of, of practice drops to get and retain currency. And we can provide them that JTAC training at a, at a really low cost, which frees up the, the burden on those high-end fighters, uh, avoids the fatigue life uh, coming off those high-end fighters, and it lets us uh, provide very rapid turns on, uh, on providing, uh, my, myself and, a, and another guy in the company, for instance, worked with one of our National Guard units and provided uh, over 100 controls in a two-day period for virtually no cost, less than it would have cost one hour to get a fifth gen fighter into the air. Uh, I feel like if you've got, uh, if you're looking at an airplane that's got cost per hour in the thirty to forty thousand dollar range, uh, I can provide ten times as much flight time for that same hour and I, and I think most of us would agree that getting a pilot in the air for ten times as long, even if it's in a, a lower performing, uh, still offers a great experience of, of building flight time, seasoning fighter pilots, uh, generating enough tactical acumen that you're that much more effective when you are flying your fourth or fifth gen fighter. Perfect. And uh, considering your experience, where do you think the next or the next big thing is in aviation? I think uh, with all the innovations we've had in unmanned systems, I, I believe strongly, and I, uh, as a pilot, I would, uh, I, I think it's probably not a surprise that I believe strongly that that. In combat aviation, there will always be a role for the, for the human mind to be able to make decisions that are life and death decisions. But what I think there's a real uh, revolution in military affairs coming with uh, manned unmanned teaming. Uh, with our other airplane, the, uh, the Scorpion, we've partnered with our, uh, one of our sister business units, Textron Systems, uh, and we've done some work in manned unmanned teaming where we demonstrated in a uh, live virtual constructive environment the ability to have uh, multiple drones uh, that we can take control of in the air. And so the front seater in the Scorpion is flying the Scorpion, and the back seater is actually controlling not only, uh, in our case we did it with two drones, uh, but also controlling their sensors. So from the back seat of a flying airplane, you're controlling other airplanes, and you're able to send those drones down below a weather layer, uh, closer to the threat than you might want to go in your manned aircraft, and uh, even to have that, uh, that drone lays a target or surveil a target and provide you live streaming feed into your cockpit of what it's seeing uh, in, uh, within a tritable asset. So if something were to happen to that asset, you haven't lost a person. Uh, and I think that I really believe that the, the tactical development of man done man teaming, the ability to have a, a, a loyal wingman that you can send into, deeper into harm's way than you might be willing to go in your own platform, will fundamentally change aviation warfare um, 
in a way very analogous to what happened to surface warfare when surface ships first got helicopter assets on board, on board and, and found that their weapons horizon and their sensor horizon was, was now in the hundreds of miles instead of the dozens of miles. I think we'll see a similar revolution in, in aviation warfare. Uh, we're proud to be part of that again with our with our with uh, Textron Systems and their uh, their Centurion product that we that we uh, installed in Scorpion. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're all very welcome. Thank you.